So I can't take it every time that Joe Biden says, well, we've created 15 million new jobs since January 2021. Can't take it. Cannot take it. Why, Pat? Why did you roll your eyes? (laughs) Well, he didn't create 15 million new jobs. Nowhere near. Uh, Mm -hmm. Those jobs came back after the Mm -hmm. the COVID Mm -hmm. situation was over and people went back to work. Okay. It's much worse than that. It's much worse than that. I want to give you just the facts. These are compiled in a great story on Blaze Media. Just go to blaze.com, theblaze.com. Daniel Horowitz writes an unbelievable... This should be sent to everyone you know. He says, he says, the Bureau of Labor Statistics publishes two jobs reports, the Establishment Survey and the Household Survey. The Establishment Survey samples actual employers and shows the growth in non-farm payroll jobs as well as a breakdown by specific industry, while the Household Survey samples individual households and measures broad census data, such as total number of employment age population, size of the labor force, the U3 unemployment rate, and total number of employed and unemployed. So... He always has this talking point where he says, oh, I created uh, 15 million jobs. Daniel Horowitz starts with Mm -hmm. his talking point about job creation is the ultimate self-indictment. Listen to this. Getting a precise picture of the U.S. unemployment uh, or employment requires conflating data from both of those surveys. Typically, the data complement each other. But in the last couple of years, the numbers have diverged. For example... The establishment survey shows 3 million additional people employed since January 2021. This may be due in part because the employer-based survey picks up more illegal aliens than the survey of households. The White House obviously prefers to tout the establishment survey's figure. In any event, the reality is Biden has a much worse record on job creation than Donald Trump. And that's before we delve into the nature of these jobs. When COVID-19 shut down the world in March 2020, employment cratered. It took well over a year to come back from the lockdowns and merely get back to par with the pre-COVID baseline in February 2020. As such, the only fair comparison for Biden to make is to measure the number of employed individuals today compared to February 2020. I think that's fair, right? Yeah. And not even all jobs. I think that's being generous. Not everybody's job was back by February 2020. Right. Viewed that way, we don't have 15 million new jobs. We have 5.5 million jobs created between January 21 and February of this year, according to the establishment survey, and just 2.3 million according to the household survey. Let's go with a more impressive 5.5 million figure, even though the Philadelphia Fed believes that's overstated. Although 5.5 million still sounds meaningful, remember, the country is constantly growing. Since February 2020, the civilian non-institutional population of working age residents grew by 8.1. I wonder if this is even counting the illegals. So job growth has not kept pace with population growth, especially judging from the household survey. This is why the civilian labor force participation rate is down from 63.3% ahead of the lockdowns to 62.5%. When factoring in population growth, the fact, the fact is we find an additional 729,000 unemployed inv- individuals today. Put another way. 611 out of every 1,000 Americans of unemployment age were working before COVID compared to 601 today. Jeez. Also, an additional 5 million people are no longer in the labor force but of working age, which means that for whatever reason, they gave up on job the job market. Federal Reserve Uh, Chairman Jerome Powell explains these missing workers are the result of excess retirements. Really? Those are the Mm. workers we're missing. The ones who are ready to retire. In short, we have a much larger population without jobs than before COVID. 
Compared to the same period under Trump, the current labor market today is terrible. After 37 months into Trump's tenure, the establishment survey showed 6.7 million jobs created. But here's the kicker. The population only grew by 5.6 million, which means the job growth under Trump outpaced population growth by 20%. Under Biden, population growth has outpaced job growth by 47%, or 252% going by the household survey. Wow. Okay. Hence, by virtue of population growth alone, we have gone backward in job creation since COVID. But it gets worse. As Daniel Horowitz noted before, we have been losing full-time jobs. All the net job growth has come from part-time employment. In total, 3.4 million part-time jobs have been added since January 21 with 1.7 million just over the past nine months. This isn't a story of growing economy, of go-getters seeking upward mobility. These are people taking second and third jobs just to afford the basic standards of living. In fact, the number of those holding multiple jobs has surged by 1.6 million since Biden took office. That's why the establishment survey shows greater job creation. It is double counting the increasing number of employed people with more than one job. Also, many of the new jobs are classified as self-employed. Thanks to tax change laws, uh, tax law changes, it now includes a number of Uber and Lyft drivers. Are record numbers of people starting their own businesses? No. These are unemployed and underemployed people taking nebulous jobs or struggling workers forced to take a second gig just to tread water. Meanwhile, Mm. thanks to the endless revisions of the unemployment data, full-time jobs are now down 1.8 million since June of last year. A large share of the remaining lethargic full-time job creation has been fueled by government itself. Over the past year, government employees have uh, government uh, employment has doubled the growth rate of the private sector work. Government jobs have comprised between 21 and 58 percent of all job creation in the past six employment surveys. Between 21 and the low end. And 58%, 60% of all job creation. It takes no skill or ingenuity to print trillions of dollars and create phantom jobs while saddling consumers with the consequences. This is perhaps one reason why all the job creation has been concentrated in 15% of U.S. counties. Think of that. All the job creation has been concentrated in 15% of U.S. counties. All of the job growth over the last year came from just 59 out of 389 metro areas across America. They were part-time, they went to foreigners, and 15% of the country. Perhaps the most shocking data point, I mean, I'm already spinning. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the most shocking data point that nukes the Biden administration's entire job growth narrative is the drop in since October 2019 native born U.S. workers. They have actually lost 1.4 million jobs. Over the same period, foreign born workers have gained 3 million jobs. In fact, there has not been a month of net job creation for native-born workers since July 2018. Wow. So where do they even get the 15 million figure? Because it's not even from COVID jobs coming back. No, no, the 15 million is uh, with COVID, 10 million in COVID, 5.5 Uh, They say so you add when the jobs come back and then the five point five million that they created. That's where they get the 15. Yeah. So if you stop after February 2020 (laughs) or 2021, I can't remember um, when they say, okay, jobs were coming back. Now people were going back to work. 
Mm-hmm. So if you put if you take all those jobs that people were going back to work in, okay, mm-hmm. then you start from there. You only have five point five, but out of but the, we've had over eight million new people. Correct, and I don't believe we should call Daniel. I don't believe that counts for the, the illegals. Illegals. Jeez. That's another ten million, and the natural born citizen, not the foreigner. But the natural-born citizen here has actually lost employment. Mm -hmm. That that employment number is going down. So all of the jobs created are from foreign workers, part-time jobs, or government jobs. That's not good. 